Hi, this is Jacob L. Thank you for watching this video in the Sci-Fi Discussions video series. What I'm showing you here is a 3D model made in SketchUp for a flow test model for the rotorless turbojet engine that I had discussed in an earlier video. So this model is to be 3D printed and used with an air compressor blowing in the sides to simulate the burners on the inside pressurizing the chamber and the test is to find out if it can still produce intake vacuum. This is my first 3D printed model of the rotorless turbojet engine. I made it for flow testing. Basically it's three separatable intake, midsection, and outlet pieces so I can print different pieces and bolt them together and try what works, what doesn't work. Basically what I've got for testing here is an inlet with some guide vanes and four different ports in the midsection that lead into the vortex chamber in the center. These are at different angles, zero degrees, the angle meaning like this, tilted between front and back, so zero degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and the steepest one, 30 degrees. So the intent of what I'm testing right now is I'm gonna pressurize this chamber with compressed air by blowing into these ports. And both ends, inlet and outlet, are open. So with just a tube, you'd expect air blows out both ends because you're blowing compressed air into here. But the intent with this design is that with a vortex circulating inside there, it will generate intake vacuum and be drawing air in and blowing all the air out the back. So I'm gonna use this to test if there is intake vacuum or if air is blowing that way out of the intake because the flame will move depending on which way. Okay, so I've got this air nozzle from my air compressor. And here, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see. So I'm blowing into the chamber. Watch the flame. The flame is clearly being drawn into the intake, which means despite the fact that we're blowing compressed air into the engine, it's pulling vacuum at the front, which means that this engine, it, at least this flow test model, is working. And this is the first model. I'll be re refining it a lot more. I'm gonna crank the pressure up and see what that does. I haven't tested that yet. This is 90 PSI. This is great. Let's try the 10. So this is a really good sign. I'm definitely gonna continue development with this engine then, since, uh, the initial flow test model is showing good signs. Oh, 10 seemed like the strongest vacuum, wow. When I block off part of the intake like this, with my fingers, the vacuum at the intake becomes strong enough that the flow across the candle is so much that it will put the candle out from drawing vacuum into the intake. So it's, it's full on just sucking air in the intake. It wants to flow the way that I expected, which is really pleasing. This is the rear flow straightener slash rear nozzle of the engine. It has these veins in it that are angled at the front part of them to capture the air and redirect it straight out the back. That piece is pretty simple and seemed to work fine on the flow testing model. This is the center vortex chamber. Uh, the outward cone shape of it, you can see, is so that the centrifugal force from the rotating vortex will tend to force the air towards the rear of the engine. This is the inlet section. You can see it has those vanes that direct the flow into a spiral as it comes into the engine. So here you can see a better view of what the vanes look like. By having the lower section there, the bottom part of them, sorry, by having the bottom section there nearly parallel with the rotating flow, it should create vacuum at the end of the veins to so the air will be drawn into the vortex. Okay, Here are some pictures from a model that I had made earlier in Autodesk Fusion 360. Hopefully this will help show a little bit of the design intent a little bit better. So the intent of this design is to be a jet engine that is simple and cheap and light enough 
to be used for a wide variety of things where a regular turbojet engine is just too impractical. Because a typical turbojet engine requires a lot of precision machining, balanced high-speed rotating assemblies, and ridiculous level of maintenance compared to you know, many other types of engine that exist. But this design here, the rudderless turbojet engine, if I can get it all working right, is meant to be a very simple, light, cheap type of turbojet engine that could just be stamped out of stainless sheet steel and would be pretty much zero maintenance. There might be some minor maintenance over extremely long intervals with the fuel system, like replacing or cleaning injectors or something, or maybe replacing electrodes for the ignition system. Other than that, it would be really nothing to wear out, no precision machining required, at least almost nothing, no high-speed rotating assemblies to balance. There's also no need for a lubrication system. There's really not anything that's going to fail in normal use. I don't expect it to be able to generate as much compression as a normal turbojet engine, and so it would probably not be as efficient. But the light and cheap nature of it would make it practical for small VTOL aircraft or any type of project where you'd like something to be propelled by a jet engine but it's not practical because of the types of jet engine that are available right now are just too expensive or too ridiculous for what you're doing.